Come on by and have a bite at the Crossroad Diner, the place where your spirit goes when it might be time to change direction. On this Monday morning Crossroad Diner coaching session, John and I talk about five W's and an H, the way you go about sorting a problem into its basic pieces. Hey everybody, welcome to Crossroad Coaching. I'm your host, Steve McCurdy. And I am John Burnett. And uh, co-coach and great friend and uh, incredible insights. We are, um, we're in this sequence for, um, I, we're talking about whether it goes eight or 10 weeks. We're not sure. Whatever a number of ideas we come up with. But these are going to be nuggets. These are going to be, um, our goal is to be under 15 minutes. Uh, we just did a rehearsal, which went for seven hours. And so uh, we decided we need to be more concise. And um, the, the idea is that you get an idea, one idea uh, each time that's usable. That's a coaching tip that is usable for looking uh, a lens to look through your life where you are right now with respect to your mission, your vision, your purpose. So, um, John, talk about where what we came up with and why you thought we should start here. Yeah, so I absolutely. So my default is chaos. So one of the terms used for me is structured chaos. And whenever I tell people some of the structures that I have in my life, they are in shock. They're like, oh, are you actually a detailed person? It's like the answer is no, I am chaos when left to my own accord, right? And so I love to put structure in. I love to have tools to help me with processes because right. generally speaking, it is not my wheelhouse. Inspiration, encouragement, motivation. That's what I love to do everything on the fly. But the problem is doing everything on the fly doesn't allow the structure for so many things to actually get, get done, come to fruition. So, so when Steve kind of threw out this uh, simple journalistic structure that we could use to help us determine what we're going to talk about each week. I thought this is a great thing we could share with other people because it is a great tool for us to pull out, look at very simplistically some key ideas and there's some alliteration in it. So that's always nice to get things done, to make decisions and keep moving. Yep. Thank. So it, when I was in high school and I took journalism, I was so ticked off because I'm an entertainer. I'm, I, I like, I like in, things that are enjoyable. But what uh, what they wanted was just the facts, ma'am. And I think there's a great middle ground. But I think if you start with the facts, then you've got a great foundation to build on. So the, the journalistic questions, there are five W's and an H. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. If you've got all six of those questions answered, you've got the essence of any story. But you've also got the beginnings of building and expanding on that story and saying, this was interesting. This was confusing. Let's go. Let's go peer into that. Let's go after that a little bit. So um, John and I kicked this around. I'm going to talk a little bit about each one of those from my perspective of their coaching value. And then John's going to give you his view. Who? For me, when we're talking about coaching, we're, we're talking about you. We're talking who is always me, myself, you, yourself. The who is the person that all of this is going to be relevant to. And so um, it may involve others and it may, you know, your question may be, I need to get someplace and the who will be, that's as a person that's the gateway, the gatekeeper. I need to focus on them, but you have to know who you are going into that ask. John. Absolutely fantastic. And, and for us, as we're working through this process of determining what items we're going to cover, what ideas we're going to cover each week, we absolutely have to be focused on our who and our who is the listener, the viewer. We're it's in, in this case, while we are delivering direction, we're the guides. We're not the hero. Our, our, our listeners, our viewers are the hero, our clients, so to speak, are right. the heroes of, of the story. And so that's what our who is all about. Okay. Now. When for me, it's always now. That's the only thing that really exists is now the past is useful for, constructing information sets and finding truth and finding obscurity. It's not what's relevant right now. What's relevant right now is now this needs to be what we're looking at now and what it will affect later is important too. Uh, you know, we may be making a plan that's got a, a win that's in the future, but we have to come to it from our now place. Yeah. I, I completely agree. I remember when we were talking about this the other day and you, 
pointed out just the relevance of this is the only thing we can affect is right now. Right. And so I, I love the idea of getting centered, being present. I get crazy sometimes thinking about the idea that we never really teach our children that the idea of being aware in the present moment and how critical it is in our life. So to be able to, to stop in this moment, as we're looking at ideas, direction, needs, whatever it is, is I think just a critical, critical point. And maybe somewhat, e somewhat one of the easier ones, if we can get present, if we yeah. can truly. Be present. Yeah. And I think I skipped what? Did yes, skip you did. Yeah. I wouldn't, I figured we'd cover what as we go and we could always rearrange them if you wanted to. But. Well, I, I got it in my mind who and when are always me now for me. You know, it, it's what effect am I going to have on this? If you if you are looking at, at somebody else's gateway being dependent on them, if that's your who, uh, you still had to start with who you are going into the ask. So who and when we've covered. Let's talk about what. What is clearly defining the issue at hand, clearly knowing and the who, what, when, where, why, and how help you figure out what that what is. Uh, because many times you can get yourself on a rabbit trail. You can find out that you, uh, you're, what you're after, what you're trying to do is a surface thing. It's a symptom. It's the snow on the iceberg. It is not the thing with the mass beneath it. So you need to define What's going on here? What is the issue at hand? What is the specific thing I want to address? And then don't mind going on the rabbit trails, but know that they are. You got to come home to about the what and the now. Yeah, exactly. I, I think about it as clarity, right? Yeah. yeah. That we have got to get clear on the what. We we cannot make a a solid decision we can't make make a, even about our ideas if we don't really understand the what we've got to know what we're dealing with what we want to communicate from a story standpoint what's happening within any particular moment of a story um and for us the story of direction and that's the what that we've yeah. got to if we don't have clarity everything else could be could be shaky at best <laughs> So when we go through any issue over the coming weeks, uh, when we when we come to this, what hopefully some of them will have great examples of crystal clear, very evident, not what's things that look like they're the what, but they're not. And that other questions help us realize we got the what wrong. And because we got the what wrong, everything else is falling apart. We need to go under that to, for the better what. Who, what, when, where. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, the where is going to be situational, but it's actually the where it kind of goes back to you. For me, it goes back to where am I coming from? Where do I want to go? If I don't know where I am now with respect to whatever this issue is, I cannot make a plan that's going to get me someplace else. I can identify where the someplace else is. But unless I know where I am with respect to it, I can't make a path. John. Yeah, that's beautiful. I, I just think about um, I, I've, I've over the last couple of years really grown to love hiking. And when you find a trail map, the first thing you do is go, where the heck am I? And if you can find that little red dot that says you are here, it changes your perspective of the situation. So when I'm hiking and I know where I, I, I know where I started, right? And as I wander through the woods, not having a clue because I've never been in this certain you know forest or on this mountain or whatever, um, I, I need to know: Am I making progress? Am I not? Where am I now? So the where is is a critical point as we go through life, and that the the beauty of those maps, those trail maps. You know, you think about the trail map of life. When you know where you are, it gives you clarity on how to get to where you want to go. And what it's, your options are, how many other ways you could get there. Abs absolutely. And, you know, you know, I was talking about hiking. I also love snow skiing. I could go on a many stories of getting to a point on the mountain, wanting to be on a blue or a green, and I'm standing at the top of a black. And I yeah. need options, right? <laughs> Give me something that was pointing to anything other than the black diamonds I'm getting ready to kill myself on. Absolutely. So, where, 
the where and and knowing that as you go through life is is so important. So important. And, yeah. Um, w- when I took my kids to Disneyland, they were um, they were six and nine respectively, and whenever we would go up to a map to plan where we were going to go next. It said, you are here. My son would kind of look at it. He, he was the logical one. And about the third time he said, dad, how do they know that we're here? And I, how did they know we were going to get to here when they printed this map? And I said, I love it. I'll, I'll explain it to you later. But the point <laughs> is John's point and mine is the starting point where, okay. The big question, the big W why? Yeah, we got Nobody is more eloquent at talking about finding your why than than John Burnett. Talk talk about that. Go ahead. For for me, you kind of you talked about um, you know where you are right now. So much of all of this, the why, everything that we deal with, goes back to why. Why are we here? Why am I at this moment in time? Why do I find myself uh, in a, in a circumstance that needs deep evaluation? understanding the why and, and the motive, right? It's all about motive. So, so not only why am I at this moment, but why do I want to go? Why, why do I want to um, get up and take a shower and go accomplish something, hopefully part of my why. And that why is the driver. That's the motivation. If there's, if there's not a clear motivation for you to go to, to another where, or for you to address a what, or even yeah. be concerned with your who, it doesn't matter. I mean, we, our, our audience is our who because of our why. Because, you know, for me, I, I exist to passionately inspire others to more of what they were created for. So as we go through this, coaching is a phenomenal way to do that. Speaking is another thing we're working on that um, we have the opportunity to do the same thing. Living in the center of your more. And so getting to that, you know, and I could use that, getting to that center of your more can be the motivation for almost any anything you do. But it, it kind of starts with the why. We really, I know it's it's number five on the list, but it's really important to know a why, to to have a motive behind any decision, any direction, any story you're going to tell, you got to have an objective. You got to know your why. Yeah. And, um, and one of the things that when you're looking at your why with respect to a specific issue, the why also can go, why is this issue? Why am I having this experience? Why did I every, this is, I'm in this place because of this chain of decisions I made that got me here. You may say, no, it's circumstantial, situational. We didn't, we didn't ask for COVID. Well, no, but the situation that you're in, how is it affected by your why? And how is your fear or joy, uh, comfort or discomfort affected by your why in this situation? Why is a big one. Now this one is controversial. Uh, how most people start with that. And they stop immediately because they don't know how. If you've gone through the who, what, when, where, why, uh, why journey, you've got context and you are looking at this through your mission, through your uh, direction, through your uh, way of living out your life and living out what who it is that you want to be and the effect that you want to have. So how still may stymie you, but you've got all these avenues because you know where you are now and you know where you want to go. How you're going to get there, like John said, if you're stuck at the top of that diamond and you don't know the map, you're going to become a really good skier faster. It's going to be the end of that skiing career. But the don't start with how is my urgency to you. Don't start with how. If you start with how and you don't get a question, an answer to that question, you may not go on to the other questions. And that may be where you learn. That that may be where the how Starts now, John. Um, during our rehearsal, we talked about this. You have a great analogy uh, that works for the how I think greatly uh, about the car. So, t- tell the car story. Yeah, so you know it's great because it's not a long story, which most of mine are, but it's just this idea that God can't drive a parked car. So the idea is we need to move away from the curb and start going. So so create a plan and start moving towards the where that we believe we're supposed to go. So, yes, we do this evaluation. We understand motive. We, we get clear on the, the who, what, when, and where, and the why. 
but then action must take place. And that is the how you, you mentioned kind of the, the, um, uh, not the fear, but just the errancy in doing how first. Yeah. If you don't have that motive, the how is, it, it's almost like if I don't know where I'm going, any path will get me there. Right. So we need to know that we need to have the clarity of the first five of the W's before we move to the how, because that can save us a tremendous amount of time, tremendous amount of hurt that could take place. There is so much that making sure we cover the, the basics first and get clarity on the basics first, that then the how becomes, I don't want to say elementary, but self-evident. Yeah. And we can learn within that. It's not that um, we're not, we're not going to, make mistakes. You know, it's not like clarifying the first five keeps us from making mistakes in the how it just helps us. It's like, gives us an understanding of how to get to another, to get to a blue or the fact that I'm not going to be able to. So I better have a plan of getting down this black. It is that, um, you know, what I like to call the MVP, define your mission, which is, you know, deep in the why, um, and then have vision for the future, which these questions help us do. And then the how is the planning. Okay. What's right. the plan to get there? Cause we got to bring it to fruition. And this is the bringing to fruition. And we also always have to remember that since the Roman times, no plan survives first contact with the enemy. <laughs> um, and so you've got to be willing to go. I've got a how, but it's for starting. Like John said, pull away from the curb. Okay. That's who, what, when, where, why, and how. And whenever you get start stuck, look at that situation and ask those six questions about that, and it'll give you more insight. Okay, this is our first little quickie zing zing. Uh, we'll pr try to get quicker at it. But uh, welcome to Crossroad Coaching uh, with Steve and John once again. And we will take a look at another issue. What are we going to start with, John? Do you think? I think we may start with gratitude. I think so too. That's a great starting place. So tune in next week. We'll pull gratitude apart from the who, what, when, where, why, and how. See you later. Crossroad Diner Coaching on Mondays and Crossroad Diner Case Studies on Thursdays. Give us a like. It would really help us with getting the word out. And if you could give us a subscription, we would like to hope that it would do us both some good. Be with us next time in the Crossroad Diner, the place where your spirit goes when it's time to change direction.